Matthew chapter 28. chapter 28. This is a portion of scripture where Jesus had already been crucified and it was three days later, amen? And Mary and the other Mary, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were going to the tomb where Jesus was buried. And they were going there to anoint the body. And it's a little bit of a, a journey on the way to this tomb, and I'm sure that as they went, the events that had just taken place in the last few days was racing through their heads. The betrayal the mockings and the beatings that Jesus endured, the scourging of the cat of nine tails. Could you imagine? I don't know if anybody ever saw the passion, the betrayal of yes. the crucifixion of Jesus. And just to think of, it wasn't just a whipping, but it was a scourging. The crown of thorns. <clears throat> the crowd shouting, crucify, crucify. And the long road up to Mount Calvary. And I'm sure they remember the nails that was pierced through his hands and tore through his feet. All of this for the sacrifice for us. Amen. Amen. And the amazing thing to me is all that Jesus went through is, is the fact that He was able to forgive and that He was able to love even with all that He was going through. Yes. Remember what He said, forgive them, Father, for they yes. know all they do. Well, isn't that a challenge to us? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'd say that there's no one that's done anything as bad as they've done to Jesus. Amen. And yet it right in the midst of it. Jesus forgave them. He didn't wait for them to be nice. He didn't wait for them to apologize. He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they did. And this caused one of the centurions that was there to, to cry out, surely this was the Son of God. Yes. You know, whenever we walk after Christ and we begin to act like Christ, it causes people to cry out and believe on the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Matthew chapter 28. <clears throat> it says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just love it when an angel shows up. Amen. Amen. The angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and I love this, and set on it. You know why I like that? It, it reminds me of the fact that not just that the stone was rolled away, but that set on it in the sense of resting of it's done. It's finished. Yeah. And it's almost a defiance of, of now come and roll that stone back. The soldiers aren't going to do it. They quote, quaked in fear. The world still tries to do it. But the angel put an explanation 
point on the rolling away of the stone and set on it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There wasn't a big band. There wasn't a big, big celebration. It was just a simple, we've won. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's what I love about the Lord is that the greatest triumph was a crucifixion. There wasn't a big band. There wasn't a big extravaganza. But it was simply they crucified Him. And in that, He destroyed the works of the devil. Amen? Amen. He unhinged the door of death. Hallelujah. Not to be put back again. Amen? Amen. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for He is risen. As He said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell His disciples that He is risen from the dead. And indeed, He is going before you in Galilee. There you will see Him. Behold, I have told you. And so, Jesus rose from the grave. Amen? Amen. And what I love about this, this story is the fact that really, in essence, the, the angel was telling the gospel. Rolled away the stone, set up on it, and with brilliant lightning light, his countenance shone. And just like the response that the sinner should have when the gospel is preached, there was a fear and there was a, a trembling. Amen? Amen. But yet he says to those that are seeking Christ, fear not. Hallelujah. Because I know you've come to seek Him. Amen. Fear not, He is risen. He is not here. But He is risen from the grave. Amen? Amen. See, that's one thing I love about Jesus is that He came To bring peace in our hearts. Amen? Because there was, there was fear, there was enmity or, or even a war between us and God. Amen? Yes. And He came to bring us satisfaction for those things. In fact, Romans, Romans 8 says this, What then shall we say of these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Yes. Come on, he, he who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is He who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. He prays for us. Amen? Amen. Who is it that can condemn? It's Christ who died. When Jesus said to, to, the, to the crowd of those that wanted to condemn the woman, He said, He without sin cast the first stone. He was the only one that could cast the, the stone. That's right. And really, Christ is the only one that can condemn us. But He is the very one that died for us. Come on. Yeah. He is the very one that prays for us and intercedes for us. And the angel says, fear not. For He is risen. Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus. See, there's no fear whenever we seek Jesus. Amen? Amen. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. But where we feel the condemnation is whenever we're turning away from the Lord and we're not seeking Him. Amen? Yes. 
Whenever I look at these scriptures, I see that the stone was rolled away. The stone was rolled away, amen? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. That's something we can get excited about. Yes. And what I want to talk to you about this morning is what the stone represents. Number one, the stone represents the impossibility of man. The stone represents the impossibility of man. You ever try to pick up a boulder? Just in your spare time, just try to pick up a boulder. Most of us don't run out and just, hey, I think I'm going to go pick up a rock. But have you, you ever picked up, tripped over? Have you ever picked up a uh, something that is so heavy you can't even budget? This to me speaks of the impossibility of me. God picked up that which we could not pick up. God removed that which we had no power to remove. Come on. Romans 5 says, For when we were yet, when we were still without strength. Somebody say strength. Strength. When we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. This is how we see the love that God has for us. Amen? Amen. God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, yes. Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. God picked up that which we could not pick up. God did that which we could not do. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. If we could save ourselves, why did Jesus come? That's right. That's right. If we could somehow change ourselves and become good, come on. why did Jesus bother dying upon the cross? Yes. But we need to fully understand and fully rest upon the fact that it's the blood of Jesus and only through yes. His shed blood Amen. that we're changed and we're transformed. Yes. The stone represents our impossibility. We are utterly and completely without strength without Jesus. That's right. yes. Who will roll away or stop? Who will go for us? Who is worthy? It's Jesus. Amen. Amen. I used to wear a t-shirt that I don't think they make anymore, but it, it, it used to have a picture of Jesus dying on the cross on the front of it. And it says, if I'm okay and you're okay, then explain this. If we're all okay, then why did Jesus die? That's right. Oh, we got oh, got a little bit of goodness in us. We have nothing to lift any of those things and roll away the stone. We are without any goodness in ourselves to lift and roll away. Anything from our hearts. I don't know about you, but I've tried. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I remember trying to come to the Lord and reading the Bible, and of course it was making me feel worse because I began to see things in there that I didn't know were sin. Like, oh man, that's sin too. I've done that one. And I was trying to stop doing those things and, and trying to, to be good. But it wasn't until I surrendered. It wasn't until I gave up my yes. life. Yes. And placed it in his hands that those things changed. Yes. 
Sin has captivated us and enslaved us. That's the truth. Mankind is captivated and enslaved by sin. Romans 6.16 says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves as slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey? Whether of sin leading to death, or of obedience leading to righteousness. Amen. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in Him. Somebody say, believed in Him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in Him, If you abide in My Word, you are My disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. And they answered Him, We are Abraham's descendants. And have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will make me free? You will be made free. And Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, Whoever commits sin is a slave of yes. sin. Amen. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, But a son abides forever. Therefore if the son makes you free, You shall be free indeed. Sin captivates us. Amen? Yes. But the scripture has confined all under sin. Somebody say, all under sin. All under sin. That the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterwards be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs upon a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, Amen. that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. So we see here that the Scripture declares that all are confined under sin. The, the whole world is enslaved to sin. And the law, even as a jailer, Captivates and enslaves or holds accountable those that have sinned. And the only way out is through Jesus. Amen? Amen. Yes. yes. And the angel rolled away the stone Hallelujah. and set upon it. He swung open the prison gates so that we could be free. Amen? Amen. All of the world is captivated by sin, but there's only one answer, and that's Jesus. Yeah. The door, amen? Yeah. The way, the truth, and the life. Amen. So the answer to enslavement is to come to Jesus, amen? Yes. Yeah. yes. You being dead in your trespasses and, and the uncircumcision, uncircumcision of your flesh, He has made alive. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has made alive together with Him, having forgiven all your trespasses. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now is that something to be happy about? Hallelujah. Yes. Having forgiven all your trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, even the law that says thou shalt not do this and thou shalt not do that. All the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities, powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Sin captivates man, but Jesus... Is stronger, amen? Yes. He's stronger than 